Good morning to all of you that are here today in this building. It's good to see you. We look forward to when we can have more. For those of you that have joined us online, welcome. Thank you for connecting and being here. We just pray that God will use the services for His glory. Um, let me start us off by praying. Heavenly Father, we thank You for today. Father, we thank You for the rain that we so need. Thank You, Father, for the time of year. And Father, we're going to use the word joy a few times today. Help us to truly understand what joy is. Father, it's something that comes inside. It's not a, a dependent on circumstances. It's because of a relationship with You and because of peace and strength that You bring us. I pray, Father, that as we spend this time together that you would allow us, Father, to be able to focus on You, to not be distracted, to, to sing Your praises, Father, to pray uh, to Your name, and to listen as Pastor Mike shares uh, uh, the Word with us. Just use all these elements, Lord. Guide us and strengthen us. Help us to be changed by a result of being together. And help us to go forward, Father, in this season. Uh, help us to be a blessing to other people. And Father, may You bless us and watch over us. There are many prayer requests, Lord, and You know what they are. Uh, just pray that you'd work. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to encourage you, if you're here, to stand if you can. Sit if you need to. For those of you online, please stand up or imagine you're standing up. One or the other if you have the room. We're going to start off by singing this song that we've been uh, doing called Unto Us. And there's a scripture of, uh, that says, Unto us this day in the city of David a Savior is born. So that's what this is about. Who are we that a king would trade heaven's riches for a stable and a manger low? Can it be great I am bending down to reach us Morning star, let this dark world know. Here is our promised one. Jesus, our hope has come unto us, unto us. A child is born unto us, unto us. A son is given glory. To God in the highest, wonderful Prince of Peace, Emmanuel has come to set captives free, and with the angels we sing glory. To God in the highest, He has brought this great love unto us. Who are we that a king would still walk among us, knowing he would only live to die? Cross of shame, crown of thorns, he still chose to carry. Beauty broken, breathing us new life. Here is our promised one, Jesus. Our hope has come unto us, unto us. A child is born unto us, unto us. A son is given glory to God in the highest. Wonderful Prince of Peace, Emmanuel has come to set captives free, and with the angels we sing glory. To God in the highest, He has brought this great love unto us. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Love has come unto 
us, unto us, a child is born, unto us, unto us, a son is given, glory to God in the highest, wonderful Prince of Peace, Emmanuel has come to set captives free, and with the angels we sing glory to God in the highest. He has brought this great love unto us. Amen. Be seated. Welcome, church family, friends, and visitors. If you are new here, we would love to get to know you. Whenever you are participating online, please complete a Connect card. You will find the link to Connect card in the upper right or under the three little menu bars on the top left. These will still be available even after the live stream ends. Just be sure to scroll down to the bottom of the card and click on Submit. Particularly if you don't type messages in the chat, please use the Connect card to let us know you are here and doing okay. Also, the Connect card is a great way to send in questions, comments, or prayer requests. If you know we already have all your connection information, just putting your names is enough. Thanks for helping us to help you. Now let's join together in worship. Good morning. We have lit the first two candles, one for hope and one for love. Today we light the third candle, the candle of joy. This should be an easy one because joy is all around us. The children, the lights, the music, the gathering together. In Isaiah 49.13 we read, Shout for joy, O heavens. Rejoice, O earth. Burst in the song, O mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. In Psalm 71, 23, my lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you, I whom you have redeemed. In Psalms 97, 11, and 12, light is shed upon the righteous and joy upon the upright in heart. Rejoice, Lord, for you have, for you are righteous and praise his holy name. Thank you, Mike and Peggy. Good to see you guys again. So let's continue singing. I invite you to stand and join us. If you can, we're going to sing a couple of songs about joy. Joy to the world. Why should there be joy in the world? Because the Lord has come. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ What fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy Repeat, repeat the sounding joy No more let sins and sorrows grow nor thorns infest the ground. The curse will be broken. Please blessings flow. Peace is found. Far as the curse is found. Far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love 
and the hundreds wonders of His love. How great our joy. While by the sheep we watched at night, light tidings brought an angel bright. How great our joy, great our joy, 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 joy. Praise we the Lord in heaven on high. Heaven on high, there shall be born, so he did say, in Bethlehem, a child today, how great our joy, great our joy, 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 joy. praise be the Lord. Heaven on high, praise be the Lord in heaven on high. There shall the child lie in a star, this child who shall redeem us all. Great our joy, great our joy. Joy, 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 praise be the Lord in heaven on high, praise be the Lord in heaven on high, this gift of God will cherish well, that ever joy our hearts shall fill. How great our joy, great our joy, 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 joy. Praise we the Lord in heaven on high. Praise we the Lord in heaven on high. Please be seated. Donna and I are going to, Donna's going to play and I'm going to sing a song. Um, the original song is called Hallelujah. It was written by Leonard Cohen. But the original lyrics are far from Christian. So someone has taken the opportunity to change the lyrics, these lyrics that I'm going to sing to you, to you today, and make it a Hallelujah Christmas. Uh, I think the words of this song are beautiful and the melody is really almost haunting. Uh, it's a beautiful song, so may God bless you. I heard about this baby boy who's come to earth to bring us joy and I just want to sing this song to you it goes like this the fourth, the fifth the minor fall, the major lift. With every breath I'm singing hallelujah. 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 A couple came to Bethlehem expecting a child. They searched the inn to find a place for you who were coming soon. There was no room for them to stay, so in a manger filled with hay, God's only Son was born, oh hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. 
the shepherds left their flocks by night to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of angels led them all to you. It was just as the angel said, you'll find him in a manger bed, Emmanuel and Savior, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A star shone bright up in the east To Bethlehem the wise men three Came many miles and journey long for you And to the place at which you were Their frankincense, their gold and their They gave to you and cried out hallelujah Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Now for the personal verse. I know you came to rescue me. This baby boy would grow to be a man and one day die for me and you. My sins would drive the nails in you. That rugged cross was my cross too. Till every breath you drew was hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play, and the director who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. The Glory of Christmas. I am the longest running cast member of the Nativity Ensemble of our church. Well, I don't like to mention it, but I am a formally trained prodigy of the theater arts. Having Dan as part of our cast is fantastic. Lord, I am surely blessed beyond measure. Okay. Uh, okay. Good. Uh, Heather, let's uh, let's just let's do it again, but this time with more emotion. Okay. Hey, I want you to Meryl Streep this up. Okay. Dan thinks he's helping, but all he does is compare everything to Meryl Streep. Tony, need you to channel your inner Meryl. My dear Mary, stop. It is just I need to Meryl this over for a minute. Oh, this is no way to treat your actors. Meryl would have seen this and walked immediately. Really, Dan? Because this potato salad looks so Meryl right now. Suddenly. The most splendiferous heavenly being appeared to my cohorts and me. Stick to the script, please. Okay, Joel, it's called the glory of Christmas. I think the shepherds deserve a little more poetic language, don't you think? It's the Bible, Dan. God may beg to differ with you. By day, I make a living as an accountant, but a dedicated one. But... A dedicated actor must lose themselves and fully we, become a character. Right. Do you have any questions for me at all? Uh, what's that smell? Green pastures. Green pastures, in it. I am so method. I haven't bathed in a month. 
you really need to take a bath. I can't. These shepherds were society's misfits. You know, they were, sure, transfixed by um, a choir of angels, but also amazed that God had chosen them. They were the scrawny kid in PE. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the nerd who went alone to the prom. Yeah, they were, um, they were the glee club president, twice. They were the least of these. God asked me to be the keeper of the most important message that's ever been kept. Tell everyone that he sent the greatest gift ever, Prince of Peace. Lowest in the land, he's given the highest honor. What's that smell? As part of our service, we take some time to pray. I'll start our prayer time here. Pastor Mike will close our prayer time. If you feel led to pray, just uh, pray out loud. If you're online, please, please type in a prayer so that others can see it and acknowledge it. Let us take this time to pray. Lord, again, we come to you thanking you for who you are. Thank you for this opportunity to gather together to worship, to sing, to pray, to hear your message. Speak to us, Father, through this day. Father, you know the circumstances that we all face. Some face physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, relational. Others face all of those. Father, I just come before you and know that you can strengthen us. And you can be in our midst. And because of our relationship with you, Father, we can be encouraged because you promised that you wouldn't leave us. Thank you, Father, as we acknowledge this time of prayer that we Realize that you are the great I am. Not I was, not I will be, not I might be, but I am. Before, during, and after our lives. Father, you're there. Thank you for your omnipotence. Thank you for your omnipresence. Thank you, Father, for just who you are and how great you are. And it's amazing that you would even consider hearing a prayer from us because of, because of our station in life. But thank you that you love us. Thank you that our sin problem you solved by sending your only son. And that's what Christmas is all about. Father, it's that beginning salvo in the battle for our lives spiritually. Thank you, Father. We know that without Bethlehem, there wouldn't be Calvary. But we thank you, Father, that we can acknowledge and remember and praise you for the birth of your son. Thank you for this time, Father. Thank you for the rain. Encourage our hearts and help us if we continue to pray.
Father, as we come to you today, we come many struggling with grief, some struggling with depression, some challenged uh, in other ways. But Father, we, we come to you because your word te teaches us and tells us to pray without ceasing. So we come to this time uh, laying our hearts bare before you. Father, there are so many uh, issues that we pray about. The, the loss of loved ones, the, the crises in our country and around the world. But we have this confidence that no matter what, you're still in charge. You are the God of our salvation. You are the one who brings us the peace that passes understanding. You are the one who fills us with joy. And so this morning we come to you rejoicing that we have the privilege of coming into the presence of you, a holy God, the one who loves us and gave himself for us. Ah, Father, we lift you up this morning and praise you. And we wonder how you can love us because we are broken, truly. We are sinful. We are wanderers in this world. But Lord, we have confidence that one day we will stand in your presence. We will see you face to face. We will see you as you are. So we thank you and praise you. Pray this morning, especially, Lord, for Jerry Brown's family, for Nora's family, uh, Lord, who have recently uh, lost loved ones. We know that's difficult, that grief can overtake you. But, Father, we have confidence again that you know what you're doing, that you have a time and a place for each of us to meet you. We don't know when that is but you do. And we are so thankful that you love us unconditionally. And when that time comes, we can stand before you covered in the blood of Christ and knowing that you have ransomed us. Thank you and praise you. In Christ's name, amen. Well, welcome to each of you this morning, whether you're sitting here or whether you're at home. Uh, I, I must tell you that um, uh, I awoke in the middle of the night and uh, the sermon that I had, had written just didn't seem right. Um, God does that every once in a while. At least I'm going to blame it on God. And, uh, and trust that it was, in fact, his voice I was listening to. I like to be prepared. And I know what I wanted to say, but it just doesn't seem appropriate. And so this morning, uh, his voice kept going around and around and around in my head. And so... Uh, a number of pages and notes became this. And uh, we shall see and hear what God has to say to us this morning. And I must tell you that it's a little scary to be in this position. Pastor Paul, I, I imagine you've been there too when things suddenly changed. And you went, uh-oh. <laughs> I hope... I am hearing your voice. It's ironic as we come together this morning that this should be a time of incredible joy and cheerfulness. And yet, unfortunately, in our world today, there is much sadness, there is depression. People are melancholy. They're struggling.
they're cooped up in their homes and they don't have the opportunity to reach out and touch one another. Recently I was in the hospital and it was difficult because of this virus. It was, it was difficult because people I cared about and loved couldn't even come to my bedside and visit and pray over me, and yet I knew they were praying. And there were many in much more difficult conditions than I who were not permitted their families to come around them, and some of them during that time passed away. And the sad part is it seems that they were passing away alone. And yet this is a time that should be filled with joy, a time of laughter and family gathered together. And so we come this morning and we hear the voice of God. You know the story of the birth of the Christ child. We come this morning to Luke chapter 2, verse 8 and following. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. I want to stop there for a second as I was thinking about that. <laughs> I wondered, what is it that terrifies us? I don't know if you've had this incredible experience, but I remember going down the highway and all of a sudden seeing that red light in my rearview mirror. And if you're like I am, all of a sudden your heart pumps. And you're going through all of the things that you may have done. Did I fully stop at the last stop sign? Am I going too fast over the speed limit? You know, did I cut somebody off? What have I done that this red light is shining in my rearview mirror? And then it passes you. <laughs> And you feel the relief. Am I the only one who's ever felt that way? We won't even talk about the fellow who drives the Mustang out here and, and his lead foot. And I thought for a moment, you know, there was terror there. What happened? And then I realized... All of us have the same issue, guilt. Guilt. Because you know, if it wasn't at that point in time that you were going over the speed limit, there was a time when it would have been justified that you could have been pulled over and ticketed. What terrifies us? What fills us with fear? What steals us with steals our joy? Well, I'm just looking here and I see that there are a number of shepherds, and they were living out in the fields, keeping watch over the flocks. And verse nine says, And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. I can just imagine that at that point in time, all of these shepherds suddenly realized they were in the presence of the glory of God and they were rightly terrified. What terrified them? What was it that caused fear? And the answer is the light of God that revealed who they were in the core of their being. They were broken men. They were sinners. Just like you and me catching that red light in our rear view mirror, 
all of a sudden we begin to say, what is it that I have done? Where am I guilty? And these shepherds were terrified by the light. Because the truth of the matter is that they were probably in the dark. It says they were watching their flocks at night. Now, I don't know if there was a full moon and there was a little light or if there were stars so bright that they could see. I, I don't know any of that. All I know is that when the angel of the Lord appeared and the glory of God shone round about them, that they were terrified. And I can't help but think that you and I, one day when our time comes and we know we're going to leave this earth, that there's going to be a little question. Is the blood of Christ covering up my sin? Or am I going to stand naked before God and He's going to look into my heart and into my life and see my brokenness and see my sinfulness? I grow older every day, like many of you. And as we grow older, we begin to think of that time, don't we? Prepare for it. As we see our, our friends depart this world, family members depart this world, we begin to question, am I ready? Am I really ready? Are we like the shepherds in the middle of a field in the darkness of the night and suddenly the light of God appears and we wonder, are we ready? And I love the words of the angel. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. That's an imperative. Do not, do not, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. Actually, I like the King James Version a little better. Great tidings of good news. All of a sudden, as you see the red light in your mirror and you're pulling to the side of the road, you notice that the red light passes you. And you breathe a sigh of relief. Oh my goodness, let my heart be still. The angel of the Lord came and he said to those men and the middle of a pasture. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You see, that is what a believer in God can have that the rest of the world does not. We can see the light of His glory and not be afraid because He brings us good news, great tidings, of great joy, and I love this, which shall be for just me. Now, which shall be for all the people. All the people. You know, that's the, sh the, the terrible thing of it. While it's for all the people, so many of the people say no. So many of the people hear the voice of God, see His glory, and hear the good news, and they reject it. They turn away from it. I can't think of a sadder thing. And yet if we look around us in our world today, Many people hear that good news and they reject it. And the question comes, why? Why would they turn away from that? Why would they reject the forgiveness, reject the salvation, reject 
the redemption of God. Why would they do that? And the answer always comes back, stubbornness. Stubbornness. I want to do things my way when I want to do them. I, I want to be my own person. I want total control of my life. And you see, that's one of the things that makes it so difficult for people in our world today, especially with those terrible viruses going around, is they cannot control it and they get more angry. The thing of it is, when you know that God's in control, you can still face terrible times with joy. There's a, a distinction, Pastor Paul mentioned it today, Happiness is something that is fleeting. It, it can be taken from you. It's dependent on the immediate circumstances of your life. We hear it a lot today. I'm just not happy. But what's it going to take for you to be happy? More money? So get more money. Does that make you happy? And the answer is always no. I'm just not happy in my marriage. I'm going to look for somebody younger, more beautiful, more handsome. And so they go seeking that. But then they're still not happy. I'm not going to be happy until I have that car or boat or airplane or that better job or the bigger bank account. I'm just not going to be happy. And so they seek after that happiness. And guess what? After that, they're still not happy. Because the one constant in that whole thing is the person who's seeking happiness. And nothing's going to be enough. You see, it's not happiness that's important. It's joy. Joy that takes up residence in your heart. Joy that is rooted in the love of Christ that He pours out on you. You see, Galatians 5.22 tells us that joy, if you look at it, joy is the second fruit of the Spirit. How important is that? The first is love. And then joy. when you know that you are loved unconditionally, when you know that your sins have been forgiven, that there's no reason to fear the punishment that rightfully is yours because it's been paid for you. When that angel and that heavenly host came to the shepherds in the field at night and they said, do not be afraid. We bring you Good tidings, good news of great joy. Because they were bringing the agent of forgiveness of their sins. There was no longer any reason to be afraid. They didn't have to be afraid of the Roman soldiers. They didn't have to be afraid of the laws of Rome. They didn't have to be afraid of any guilt in their life because God had come in the person of a child to bring forgiveness. And he was paying that at a terrible price. We forget when we see the child in the manger that that's just a primary step that that child is going to die for our sin, for our guilt. I marvel at what Jesus did for me. I remember when I came to know Christ, really know Him, I marvel because I remember the lightness I felt. That that big old backpack with all of that guilt that I'd carried around for years was gone. It was taken away. It was picked up 
and put on the back of a man who went to the cross with that burden that was mine. And so for the first time in my life, I remember distinctly running all the way home to tell my dad what had happened. And I felt, quite frankly, like my feet never touched the ground because I was filled with joy. I know what David felt like when he came before the Lord in in Psalm 51. And he said, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Because he already knew. He had that relationship with God. And, and because of his sin, the weight was overwhelming. And he needed the restoration of the joy that he once felt because of the relationship. Oh God. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And so as the angels stood there on the hillside, as the glory of God, the doxa of God, shone around them and they were in the light of the first time in their lives, the light of God shone around them. And they were afraid because they knew what that light would reveal. And the angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you great tidings, good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For everyone who will believe, I bring you joy. Today in the town of David, a Savior he is, has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, cloths, and lying in a manger. Not what you would expect. Not what you would expect of a king. More than likely, the wrappings, the swaddling clothes were simple, rough, almost rags that wrapped this child. Not the robes of a king. The robes of a king would come later. But they were the simple wrappings of poverty. He didn't come in wealth and riches. He came in poverty, poverty of spirit. But he came wrapped in the love of God for all who would listen to the good news that was brought. This morning you have an opportunity, if you have not received the joy of the salvation of God, you have that opportunity this morning to open your heart. You see, when God opens your heart, everything is revealed. Open your heart. Let him cleanse your heart. And let him fill you with the joy of his salvation. You see, today our world is filled with depression, with melancholy, with fear, and he brings peace and joy. Do not reject the gift that he brings. Remember that the true gift of Christmas isn't what you give one another. It's the gift that he gave us. Receive it and receive the joy that he has for you. 
In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6, it says this. Paul is talking to the church at Thessalonica, and he says, You became imitators of us and of the Lord. In spite, in spite of severe suffering, you welcomed the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. Listen, God understands what's going on in the world today. He knows that there are many who are struggling, who are suffering, who are grieving. And yet he says there is joy given by the Holy Spirit. You can endure hardship, disease, poverty, challenges, and you can do it in the joy that God gives. Today you have that opportunity. Some of you have experienced and have a relationship with Jesus Christ but you're living in that period of time right now when it just seems just an incredible burden every day. Let me remind you that when you know Christ and you open your heart, the joy of His presence will fill you. And you can endure anything, because he is with you. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the joy that fills our soul because of the love of Christ. Thank you for the peace that passes understanding. Thank you for the love that you poured out on us and that you gave us hope, even in the difficult times. We give you thanks in Christ's name. Amen. This is an opportunity for you to invite Christ into your life. It's not that difficult. You just ask him. Agree with him that you have sinned, that you're broken, and that you need his presence. Lord. Forgive my sins. Be my Lord and Savior. Let me follow you all the days of my life. You may be a believer and you're experiencing some tough times right now. You're alone. You may be depressed. You may be challenged. Maybe things going on in your heart, in your family, in your uh, neighbors. And they need to see you with joy. And so I ask God, Let me have that joy back. Joy is a choice as well as a gift. You choose it. Let's sing. If you're here and you want to stand, you may. If you're at home, stand anyway. That's part of the participation. And let's rejoice together. From Pastor Paul. When thou camest to earth for me, but in Bethlehem's home was there found no room for thy holy nativity. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus, there is room in my heart for thee. Heaven's arches rang when the angels sang, proclaiming thy royal decree. But of lowly birth is thou come to earth, and in great humility my heart shall rejoice, Lord Jesus. 
when thou comest and callest for me. Be seated. We are so grateful for everyone sending offerings via mail, bank bill pay, or by using the Give link on the top of your screen. Please complete a Connect card and participate in the chat. Use your Connect card to tell us if you need something, or have a prayer request, comment or question. On your Connect card, write postcards and the number you need, to be able to invite others to the rest of our Advent services. You can circle or highlight the online information front and back and note, online only at this time, in the white margin on the front. Write a personal note and sign the card. The Reynolds Annual Christmas Fellowship is being postponed until later in January. The decorations will remain up. Watch for a future announcement when it is rescheduled. It is time for the Lottie Moon Christmas Offering for International Missions. All gifts shown as, missions, in December will go to this offering. We have given $682 as of last Sunday. We have certain stories in the New Testament like Parable of the Lost Sheep where you leave 99 to go find the one. And so God doesn't forsake that one lost sheep. You have these small micro people groups where the gospel has not flowed yet because of geography, because of distance, because of cost, because of uh, culture, because of racism. I really feel that these micro peoples are part of his heart to go after all the sheep, to go after that remnant. In the Amazon, you can go a day without seeing another living soul, which is kind of freaky. But a lot of the reason why you can't see people is because they're hidden. These are hidden peoples, small in population, widely dispersed. They have centuries of a bloody history where they've been exploited. They're animists, they believe in spirits. When you live that way, you tend to be dominated by fear. I see marginalized people, I see forgotten people, I see invisible people that are in desperate need of the gospel. The area is massive, and so to get from where I live, which is already a jungle city, I have to get into a land plane and fly to another port city, and then the next day we'd get in a boat, and in this slow boat we travel sometimes three days to get to where we're going. Because we're going into areas where the gospel is not, sometimes it just takes time. But recently we have noticed just God opening some doors. God has been working to send out missionaries, indigenous men and women, where there's no evangelical presence. A well-trained and called indigenous man will be much more effective. They tend to be able to get into hard reach areas without government restrictions. You have fewer language limitations. A lot of my work is training them. So if I want to teach an indigenous man how to do storying, he has to see me do it first. Then after a while of walking alongside, he's very capable at that point. One partner in particular, he wants to go work with a group that has killed outsiders that have walked in. He's like, I don't care. God sent me to go do it. And this is such a, a 180 from most indigenous culture that you have to look at him and say, God brought this change to this man. If you see families coming to Christ, you do see village headmans getting permission to come in. It really confirms everything that we're out there to do, to go out and make disciples of all nations. When we have those things happen, we sit back and go, okay, this is what it's all about. They can go and they can teach others, and those people can teach others. I want to see this momentum like a wave through the jungle where I can say, look, I didn't see it happen, I wasn't there, but I know the gospel has reached these dark corners. When supporters of the Lottie Moon Christmas offering gives, it allows us to do things like buy an outboard motor that gets us up river, to get equipment that we need to help us stay out there in the jungle. I've been supported by Lottie Moon. Y'all's generosity is, is a luxury that I never want to take for granted. So I want to say thank you for that. God is faithful in the hard times as he is in the good times, and our mandate doesn't change. These people groups in the jungle, you could be born, live, and die without ever hearing the name of our Savior. So someone has to go, because if we don't go, no one's going to go. If we don't train people to go, no one's going to go. It's worth it.
A bit of bittersweet news. Um, Nora's, Nora Reyes' sister passed away. Uh, she was a believer. And also our friend Jerry Brown passed away uh, last night. And uh, we we're grieving with her or about her with her family. So uh, keep them in your prayers and let them know how much you care. Uh, this is a hard time for everybody. All the more reason for what in our life? For joy in our life. And so we want to continue to lift them up in our prayers. So having said that, let's pray together. Father, thank you and praise you that you love us so much that you sent the Savior, that we may know you, that we may one day stand face to face and that we may be filled with the joy of your presence. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace, your mercy, your kindness, your forgiveness. Help us to remember as we go out, when that's an opportunity again, and confront our neighbors with love and the joy of Christ, that they too may know what we have that helps us endure these hard times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.